Type 2 diabetes mellitus accounts for about 90% of all diabetes cases around the world. It is a condition that is mostly associated with insulin resistance, but it is also often due to insufficient insulin production. The number of cases of type 2 diabetes has been increasing throughout the years, together with the adoption of a Western lifestyle and the increase in obesity. In this video, we will explain how insulin acts on cells, the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes, and its common clinical presentation. Insulin is a protein hormone secreted by pancreatic beta cells in response to high blood glucose levels. It works to decrease blood sugar levels, and it does so by promoting the uptake of glucose by muscle and adipose tissue as well as promoting the synthesis of glycogen. Insulin binds to its receptor, a member of the tyrosine kinase receptor family, causing the phosphorylation of insulin receptor substrates. Insulin receptor substrates are important signaling intermediates that will mediate different intracellular signaling pathways to bring about the actions of insulin one of which is the translocation of GLUT4 glucose transporters from intracellular vesicles to the cell membrane. These receptors allow glucose to be taken into the cell and then metabolized for the production of ATP. As of the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes mellitus, insulin resistance results from a variety of factors such as genetic predisposition, a lack of exercise, poor eating habits, and obesity. One of the primary hypotheses for insulin resistance development is the accumulation of intramuscular lipids. Once the fatty acid storage capacity of adipocytes is exceeded, neutral lipids start to accumulate in non-adipose tissues like the liver, the heart, and skeletal muscle, for example. Lipids such as diacylglycerol, ceramide, and long-chain acyl-CoA disrupt the intracellular signaling processes brought about by insulin. Thus, the cells fail to respond appropriately to the hormone, leading to insulin resistance. Moreover, the chronic exposure of pancreatic islets to high levels of free fatty acids leads to the desensitization and inhibition of insulin secretion. This results in high levels of circulating glucose since the glucose is not able to be taken up by the cells. Beta cells in the pancreatic islets respond to high blood glucose levels by secreting more and more insulin leading to hyperinsulinemia which means having high levels of insulin in the blood. It also leads to the hypertrophy and necrosis of beta cells. With beta cell damage and cell death, less insulin is secreted, which will further contribute to elevated blood glucose levels. Now for the clinical presentations of type 2 diabetes. It is usually diagnosed in patients over 30 years old, and the clinical onset may be over months or years, especially in older patients. It is often associated with excess body weight, high cholesterol levels, and high blood pressure. And patients will usually present with polyuria, uh, meaning frequent urination, due to osmotic diuresis, uh, where glucose is excreted in urine, and due to the osmotic pressure, water follows, leading to an increase in urine output. Polydipsia, meaning increased thirst as the body tries to replace the excess water lost in urine. Weight loss, as the cells are starving despite the abundant supply of glucose in the blood. And polyphagia, meaning increased hunger, as the cells are in need of nutrients, so the brain tells you to eat more. It is common for type 2 diabetes patients to present with complications, such as staphylococcal skin infections, retinopathy, which is damage to the blood vessels of the retina, 
So the patients will present with a blurred vision. Peripheral neuropathy, which is uh, damage to nerves outside the central nervous system, uh, causing uh, tingling and numbness of the feet. Erectile dysfunction and arterial disease resulting in myocardial infarction or peripheral gangrene. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe.